So the last video went over most of the reactions we're going to do with alkenes for a while. This video is going to go over alkynes. Uh, most of the reactions we're going to do with alkynes. So remember, alkynes are just triple bonded. So you can, you know, something like that. That's a triple bond. And remember this. So there's one carbon here, one carbon here, one carbon here, one carbon here. That system is linear because these three bonds have to be straight. That, that, that dihedral angle right here has to be 180 degrees on both sides. So uh, the first reaction we're going to look at is just some basic acid-base chemistry. Um, now alkynes, if you haven't memorized this already, have a, a far lower pKa than uh, alkenes and alkanes. Alkanes are about 50, alkynes are about 45, they're slightly more stable, and alkane, alkynes excuse me, have a pKa of about 25. That is some lovely handwriting. pKa of about 25 because that, that triple bond can provide some resonance stabilization. So if you look at, let's just say, acetylene, which is the simplest alkyne, and you wanted to deprotonate that, that H right there, let's say you had something like, oh, I don't know, uh, some relatively strong base, like, uh, I don't know, an LDA or something. If you'd come in, we'll just call it base, come in, take that hydrogen, and now those electrons can go into that, uh, that triple bonded system, and you end up with that, which is a negative charge. And that's more stable than with an alkene or an alkane because recall what I said, alkynes have an sp hybridization. So that's one half s and one half p, kind of. Whereas an sp3 would be three fourths p and one fourth s. So that one half s character means that that the orbital is a lot closer to the nucleus and therefore is far more stabilized. So that, that conjugate base is a lot more stable than with alkenes and alkynes because the S character of the orbital makes it more stable by holding it closer to the nucleus. So anyway, we take a base, we deprotonate that hydrogen, and now that, that uh, acetylene uh, anion can act as an electro or excuse me, a nucleophile and attack something else. So we now have, let's just, I'll draw... Uh, this guy. Let's say we deprotonated that terminal hydrogen, and we can attack something like oh, oh I don't know, uh, one, two, three meth eth propyl bromide. So this bromine is very electronegative. It's pulling electron density towards the bromine, which is leaving this carbon right here very delta positive. So this negative right here is going to be attracted to that positive right there, that delta positive. And those unshared electron pairs can come in, hit that carbon, and knock that bromine off so that you end up with one, two, three, triple bond, and then one, two, three. So you had three carbons, three carbons, and then your, your triple bond. So three, three, triple bond. So that's actually symmetrical. But... Uh, as you can see, basically you're just substituting this carbon onto the triple bond by kicking off the bromine. Uh, that is a very confusing looking diagram. And that is actually called an SN2 reaction, and we will look at those a uh, little bit later. Um, so basically, you can deprotonate an alkyne, you can attack a, a uh, halogen, some uh, alkyl halogen and displace that halogen and increase your carbon length. Uh, the next reaction is just a, a reduction. So if you recall um, when we were talking about reduction of alkenes, we used palladium on carbon. Well, same thing is true for alkynes. We can use H2 with palladium on carbon, once again in like ethanol or methanol or some other alcohol. And we can end up with the alkane. Uh, same, same basic principle, all you're doing this time is putting on two different hydrogens. So you put on those two, two hydrogens and, whoa, a couple more. So you're putting on a total of four hydrogens. Um, and there was one hydrogen that was already present on that alkane. alkyne. Um, the other thing, interesting, interesting thing you can do is instead of reducing it all the way to the alkene, 
or alkane, you can actually stop at the alkene. So you can use what's called a Lindler catalyst. I'll just abbreviate it as LC. It's called Lindler's catalyst. And basically all you're doing is poisoning that palladium catalyst and making it slightly less effective so that you can turn that alkene, alkyne into an alkene. So it would look like this. And uh, if you have an alkyne that is not terminal, so let's say you had that, you would end up with a cis alkene because remember the way that it, it comes in, let's say after you've already made the... Uh, when the alkyne comes in like this onto the catalyst, so there's the palladium, they're, both of the hydrogens are going to be deposited onto the same side. So you've got the hydrogen there, hydrogen there. They're both going to get deposited on the same side. You can't get one here and one there. So if they both get deposited on the same side, you're going to end up with an alkene that looks like this. It has to be cis. Um, so we've gone over acid base, full reduction uh, with palladium on carbon, and partial reduction with palladium on carbon and a Lindler catalyst. Um, that's all we're going to deal with for alkynes for now, so this was a quickie. Uh, see you guys next time.